am I? You sure you want to know? If somebody told you I was just your average ordinary guy, not a care in the world, somebody lied. as I heard about Spider-Man. sounded interesting to me, but only if it was done the right way, like done in a way that, that would excite me, you know, in a classy way with a good filmmaker and a good story and a good cast. When I first heard about Spider-Man, I was like, oh my god, like what a cool character to do because Spider-Man's, you know, a more humanistic uh, superhero, so I feel like a lot of people can identify with him and it's a good story as well as all the action. What happens to the people in the story is quite involving. Spider-Man is about extraordinary things happening to regular people. The strength of Spider-Man for me has always been the fact that he's a real person. He's one of us who's gone through elementary school, junior high school, and now high school. So he has absolutely our frame of reference on things. He can't get the girl, he's broke, and suddenly he's this superhero. Spider-Man started as its own book in 1963 by Stan Lee. I was looking for an idea for a new superhero, and I was sitting at my desk and I saw a fly crawling on the roof. And you know, one of the things you always look for is what new power can I come up with? And I said, gee, wouldn't it be something to have a hero who could crawl on walls? But the next thing I needed was a name for him. So I thought, Fly Man? Eh, it didn't seem to have sex appeal. Mosquito Man, nah. Insect Man, ooh. And then I went down the list and then I came to Spider-Man and somehow that sounded dramatic and scary, Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man, he got bit by a radioactive spider. I knew that whole story and everything, you know, I think has like a, a slight comic book feel with reality. And I think that's important because it is a comic book. He has real problems and this extraordinary thing happens to him and it's about how he deals with it. And it's very much a coming of age story about growing to be able to accept responsibility. Great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man had a real personality, had real problems. The character of Peter Parker was a real kid in high school, and the Spider-Man comic books were more about how these superpowers affected his real life. So I could really relate to those stories in the uh, early Spider-Man comic books in the 60s and 70s, and he became one of my favorites. There's always a need to find the right blend of maintaining that history and yet making it contemporary enough that the audience is going to accept it as being now. Time worked just right. Technology is here, we have the right people that want to make it, the passion. It's very important for us to tell the story right, make a good picture, right for the times, but keep our characters in character.
Peter is, you know, he's insecure, he's uncomfortable, he's not like the charismatic, charming guy with girls. You know, he gets bit by the spider, and at first he's feeling ill. He wakes up in the morning, and he feels, you know, invigorated, and he doesn't need his glasses anymore. His eyesight is, you know, perfect. Weird. He feels totally different, and I think, you know, part of it confuses him, and he's scared, but also excited. Goodness me! Jeez. <laughs> I thought you were sick. I got better. And there's that transition for him to, you know, get used to his transformation. And, and then he embraces it and he starts climbing up the wall and running and jumping from rooftop to rooftop. Spider-Man moves and he does a, a dance. I know Sam likes to talk about his sort of choreography in the air as like a really graceful dance. Three, two. It's the place where once Peter gets comfortable with it and, and he really embraces it and learns how to, you know, swing well, it becomes a place where he's in total freedom. I think there was a consensus that Toby could play the Peter Parker side of the movie and some question, quite honestly, about could he be Spider-Man. So he came in and, and uh, to his credit, did a test and blew everybody away. Boy right there! I gotta bring you in. Oh my god, there's still somebody up there! I'm going. I'll be here when you get back. Not coming back, Chief. Go! Go! Toby Maguire was so powerful in his uh, performance as Peter Parker. He was very real, and you could see that he was a sensitive individual, and he just was uh, very potent in his stillness. And I knew that there was a lot there that we needed for this particular character of Spider-Man. Toby's great. It's perfect. I mean, when I see him in those glasses and I see him walking around, it looks like it's Peter Parker. I, I don't know. There's something that is incredibly fitting. Peter Parker has such a unique character that I felt that the thing that I should do with this picture was focus inward and really tell a smaller story about Peter, his interaction with the woman that he loves, and his growth toward being a responsible young man. I'm so interested. I'm not. You're not? Well, why would I be? I don't know. Why would you be? Toby was really good at something that sometimes I don't think I'm very good at, and that is he really is good at sort of a character analysis. I kind of look at something and I just say, okay, well, that's the way it is, and then I deal with it. But he tends to question the actions much more. Peter, may I introduce my father, Norman Osborne? I've heard so much about you. Great honor to meet you, sir. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Basically, I play a double role. I play the Green Goblin, and then I play Norman Osborne. I'm right here. <laughs> And sometimes, in the same scene, they play scenes together, no which was way. unusual. And it's only the beginning. Think of what we can do. W Willem's a great actor. Obviously, he can, he can pull off both parts. You know, in the movie, there are times where he needs to pull off both parts at the same time. And so that, that was, uh, that's really the challenge uh, for, for an actor. Don't get caught. Risks are part of that choice. This guy is a very driven, gifted scientist. And he addresses the question of how do these super people, what's their relationship to regular people? This super intelligent, super powerful guy recognizes, you know, good qualities of Peter, which makes him feel great. You know, it's like somebody notices me and recognizes me that I respect. No, I, I appreciate it, but I'll be fine. It's no problem. I'll make a few calls. No, I couldn't accept it, sir. I. I like to earn what I get. I can find my own work. I respect that. You want to make it on your own, Steve. He's as good or better than any of the stuntmen, and he's done, you know, I'd say 90% of his own stunts. And really kind of brought this physicality to the goblin, to the portrayal was also, you know, this 
When he's Norman, he's one way physically, and when he's the goblin, he's completely transformed. No one says no to me! Willem's great to work with, because first and foremost, he's just a great actor, and I'm a big fan of his work in general. He's so full of life. He's so ready to jump in and, and do this. Yeah, that's a super villain. Plus, he's in ridiculous shape. <laughs> I like the character of MJ just because it gives me a chance to make a, a hero for the young girls who watch the film. She has a bad childhood, bad past, and abusive parents. And in the beginning of the film, she always tries to date the football player, or be popular, or just cover up her home life and, and try to be somebody who she's not. She catches little glimpses of Peter Parker's love for her, but it doesn't really register in the beginning. It's kind of just lingering, I think, in the back of her mind. And he's always endearing to her and always makes her smile and makes her feel good about herself. You're awesome in all the school plays. Really? Yeah. I cried like a baby when you played Cinderella. Peter, that was first grade. Living in New York, I think she grows up and, and she realizes who she really cares about in her life and the one man who ever loved her for who she is and it didn't matter, you know. He really liked her for the Mary Jane inside of her. What we were really looking for was someone who had a chemistry with Tobey Maguire. We wanted the audience to recognize that these two people had a connection and we wanted the audience to need them to be together. And when I saw Kirsten and Toby perform the scene together, we felt that they made that connection. She really is a very hardworking young actress. I think Kirsten's great because, first of all, she's a really great, soulful actress who knows how to have a lot of fun. And it's, it's great to work, to work with that kind of energy. When you have the Mary Jane of the comic book. So you're always trying, just like with Peter Parker, you're trying to live up to what's that expectation. So you're kind of waiting for someone to walk in the room where you go, oh, that's Mary Jane. That's MJ. Yeah. He's sort of a nerd odd duck, the classic son trying to win the affection of the father and maybe at times just rebelling to get attention. James Franco had actually come in for Spider-Man, and we'd just been so taken with him, thought he was remarkable. And there's a real, you'll see in the movie, you really, this real kind of, um, you really believe he and Willem are father and son. It's quite a complex relationship, done very subtly and, and I think really well. Man, this whole thing, so you can meet MJ, and now you have to leave? I gotta go. Man, this girl is important to me. Harry, please. Your mother was beautiful, too. They're all beautiful until they're snarling after your trust fund like a pack of ravening wolves. Thanks for sticking up for me, Harry. When I was asked to uh, play Aunt May, I didn't know she was a real person. But since I've talked to friends and they ask me what I'm doing and I say Spider-Man, I get a wonderful reaction. People say, really? Oh, how wonderful. Are you having fun? And I say, yes. And then they say, what are you playing? And I say, I'm playing Aunt May. And they say, well, of course. There we are. Oh, it looks delicious. <laughs> Norman, will you do the honors? Hey, well. going to the downtown library. I'll see you later. Oh, yeah, wait, Pete. I'll uh, I'll drive you there, buddy. Oh no, I'll take the train. No, no, no. I need the exercise. Go on, go, 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 go. I think Ben is. If there is such a thing as a typical avuncular uncle, a warm, loving, caring uncle who wants to be everything a father should be to a son who is not his son. Pete, look. You're changing. I know. I went through exactly the same thing at your age. No, not exactly. Peter. These are the years when a man changes into the man he's going to become the rest of his life. Just be careful who you change into.
a balcony overlooking Times Square. That's the island. Sam, he's a character. I've heard the stories about how he's been a fan since he's a kid. Sam grew up having Spider-Man painted on the wall in his room, which is the, the best kind of a man to take the helm for a movie like that. What I always would admire as a kid how the artists in comic books had to come up with one illustration that told the story. You'd see these very dramatic presentations in the comic books and uh, they had to depict exactly what was happening in the drama. He has such a great imagination and I hear him talk about Spider-Man and his eyes sparkle. So I think that he just, you know, had such a knowledge and such a love for it and it really comes through. <laughs> he really went to his own kind of gut about what attracted him as a young man, as a boy, to the Spider-Man story. He's a great collaborator. He really, just in general, made me feel like a part of the team, like I was really contributing a lot to, to the film. What Sam's good is rooting all the fantastical elements with a reality. Sam is going for a very naturalistic feel to play off the fantastic side of Spider-Man. The first meeting I had with Sam, you could tell that he was very passionate about the character of Spider-Man, and he truly understood what Spider-Man was all about. And it's, it's why I took the job, is that he has that ability to, to explain to you truly what the film is about, what the character is about, and, and, and why it's important to make Spider-Man. The sets were really fun to work on and really fun to see them build and exciting to see them go up. Each set is such a character in this film and New York is an important part of this movie. It'll have like a romantic feel to it, I think. <sighs> I didn't feel it was proper to have a super stylized world, like the comic book world like you see in a lot of comic book films. I felt that the most important thing to do was to create a real world. There are parts of New York that are magical. So what we decided to do was just to create a whole city of those realistic, magical parts of New York. Neil Spizak uh, truly loves New York, understands New York, and was able to bring his passion of New York to the film. One of the design elements that I tried to incorporate into the film as a whole is a slightly overscaled and somewhat classical architecture, building tops and places that you normally aren't on buildings, closer to the upper architecture of the buildings of New York. Really, it's like if you look at the comics, you, you flip through the pages and you look where Peter grew up, it's in this movie. If you look where Peter went to school, it's in the movie. Where would a kid like Peter share an apartment today? It's the apartment. He did a great job to be able to put together a very fancy side of Manhattan, because that's the Osborne side of the world, with, with this modest upbringing where Peter comes from. And he connected it beautifully. And what, what is Spider-Man's world? And certainly he exists at the rooftops of New York. We scouted tons and tons of rooftops of New York, so we got to see the whole side of New York that most people never get to see. And we're bringing that to the film, and I think it's very exciting. It was so important to me that it looked real. If it looked bogus, it wasn't going to work. Our optical effects supervisor, John Dykstra, convinced me that it would be possible. The important part of this movie was to make sure that the character's humanity showed through even when he became a superhero. And although we'd like to think that our stunt people and our actors can do all of these terrific fly through the city scenes, the truth of the matter is that it's either too dangerous or or physically impractical for them to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in between the lines. I think that we are very fortunate to have John Dockstra on this movie. 
John has an amazing legacy in the effect business. It's pretty amazing to me, you know. I think there's been a few, you know, a few great innovative films out there that, you know, just raise the bar. This is a whole different kind of thing, you know, where it's very specific action to Spider-Man. What happens to the people in the story is quite involving. It's been a long journey. It's definitely been like such a learning experience for me. I got to do a lot of stunts, so it's definitely been a, a like physical testing my limits kind of movie. The level of action in Spider-Man is exceptional. There's so many elements that uh, were designed from the ground up to create an action sequence, um, an, an aerial dogfight battle over Times Square. You don't see that every day. I've never learned so much making a picture as I made this one. There were so many aspects of filmmaking that I had learned over the last 20 years that I had to draw upon to make this particular picture. I think that the audience will like the fact that the actors and the writers and the whole production team tried to stay true to the spirit of what made Spider-Man the comic book great. I have never really been involved in such a big production, a production that's had so much special effects, the integration of special effects with traditional scenes. You don't usually get such a great collaborative bunch on such a huge film like this, so I feel like there's more heart to this film than it, than it would, you know, one of those kind of special effects films would have. It is so exciting, and you see talented people who put their own take on your characters, and they make them even better than ever. They bring them to life, their flesh and their blood, and they move and they talk, and there's music and sound effects, and it, it's wonderful. It's incredibly thrilling. Flexes. Every couple of months, one of my friends will go, dude, you're Spider-Man. You're doing Spider-Man. I can't wait for that movie. You know, and they like get all excited. I'm like, yeah, that is cool. Watching us, watch as we all fly.